So the topic today is the art of abundance. And that opens up a big, a big can of worms there. Because we are religious, spiritual scientists is what our teaching is called. Um, and in religion or spirituality, there is perfection. There is unlimited abundance, eternal life. Limitless creativity, joy, happiness. But in the scientific side, which is the physical side, there is a paradox. Mark Nepo, he didn't explain it that way, but that's the way I take it, called it flawed abundance. That it shows up that the physical world is vital, but it's not perfect in the way we think of perfect. It's perfectly unfolding, but not the perfection we think. That perfection comes from expanding our spirituality, our greater, our greater understanding that we can take any situation and know there's good there. Thank you, uh, Kirk and, and Gretchen, for singing um, God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. I woke up in the middle of the night and that song was going through my head. And I thought, that's so true because there is only one power. And everything comes from that power. And if we think about it, I mean, think of the sun. The sun is one star in a galaxy of 100 billion stars. And that sun uses that power from God, from whatever you want to call it, that infinite power, uses that power to source every single thing on this planet, all its life. That's the potential of this power that's out there for all of us. Think of that. It was Hafez, and I'm not going to do any Rumi quotes today, you guys. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So I'm just sticking to Hafez this Sunday. But um, Hafez says, even after all this time, all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Think what could happen with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. And that's why we're here. Because we know when we utilize that power for good, that power of love, the power of possibility, that we can light up this world in love. You know, Joseph Campbell, I love this quote from him. I always keep it in my notes because it just always cracks me up because this is the flawed abundance I'm talking about. And I said, oh, good, I have this in here. He said, Joseph Campbell, the anthropologist, he studied people, he knew people, he knew the world was a flawed, a little flawed thing. And he said, um, <clears throat> the world is perfect. It's a mess. <laughs> it's always been a mess. We're not going to change it. Our job is to straighten out our own lives. And so that's why we're here. You know, our, our world, our life, our, our life is really a reflection of our beliefs. What we believe about life is how we interpret situations. It was Eckhart Tolle said, the primary cause of unhappiness is not the situations in our life, but our thoughts about them. And it's so true. Um, Khalil Cabran said, we choose our joys and sorrows long before we experience them because it's our view on life. If we believe in lack and poverty and not enoughness and we're not good enough and all that crud, um, then we're going to experience that in our life. And poverty consciousness, lack consciousness is contagious. It can be hypnotic. And we know we li live in a world that is abundantly supplied with every good thing. The two big beliefs that I think keep us stuck in a, just in a consciousness of limitation and not enoughness and unworthiness and lack is the number one is there's not enough. And I'd say if we take that personally, there's not enough of me. I'm not worthy. I mean, how many people have suffered from that or get little glimpses of that now and then or I've just healed from a consciousness of that because we know we're perfectly perfect, flawed and perfect as we are right here. We're perfect as ourselves. It was, oh, it was Rumi who said this. Oh. A rose is a perfect rose. A lily is perfect as a lily. And you, 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 you 
are perfect as you. And that's a reminder for us. We don't have to think in that lack consciousness and there's not enough. There's enough resources here in this world for sure right now. There's enough possibilities in the spiritual world and enough here on this physical planet. The problem is resourcefulness. We're not resourceful enough to know how to use all that we've been given. So there's not enough is one big belief. Or, yeah, there's not enough. And the other one, oh, and also that belief creates competition and greed and hoarding and you know, holding on and not sharing and not giving and not being in that beautiful dance. Oh, dancing's in the street. We could do that with this reciprocity of life. We've got to be in the flow. The other belief uh, that, I, that came is life is meant to be a struggle. Some people feel they're here to have a hard life, that we're here because punished, whatever it is. But we're here to enjoy life. Ernest Holmes said we're here to be happy, to be supplied with every good thing, to have fun in living, and to unite with the divine power and to grow and expand forever and ever. And that's why we're here. So we've got to flip our beliefs about what's going on. Change your thinking, change your... Of course. So let's do that. And we are contagious. The goodness is even more contagious. The love, just as we've been talking about, James was singing about, love is even more contagious if we can pump it up. So we need to learn to see things differently. And this is where Mark Nepo, I loved what he talked about, the flawed abundance. Because we can look that we have problems in our life and think, oh, no, there is not enough good. There's just not enough good. But as Eckhart Tolle said, some changes look negative on the surface. But you will soon realize that space is being created in your life for something new, so a new idea, a new experience. We don't know what the newness is, but something new wants to emerge. How many of you have some flawed abundance right now in your life? <laughs> Just a little bit. I know, I know, but it's perfect. It's perfectly messy. So this is what Mark Nepo says. He says, the universe is messy. Galaxies, stars, planets, life on Earth came about through the chaotic process with an underlying order, an underlying order to it. There's a, something at work in our, all of our lives, where we call it the divine order, where we, whatever we call it, we know there's something at work because we're always evolving and growing and upward to that place that we talk about, that oneness, that power. The messiness permeates all of our lives. Life unfolds in mysterious ways. So don't put a, don't put a um, case around the way you think your happiness is supposed to be. Open it up and see what spirit, what life has in store for us. Because it can be much different than we, f we think it's supposed to look. You know what I mean? You, you know the story of the man that was drowning and he was on his rooftop because of the flood. You know, we've all heard that story. And he was up there praying to God to save him. And a rowboat comes by and says, jump in. I'll save you. And he says, no, no, no. I'm praying to God. God's going to save me. And OK, he goes on. Then a motorboat comes by and says, hey, buddy, come on in. We'll take you out. The guy goes, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm praying to God. God's going to save me. I have faith. Next. The helicopter comes by, puts the line down, says, hey, buddy, get, jump on. I'm here for you. Let's go. And he said, no, 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 I got, it. I got this handled. Well, sure enough, helicopter flew off very, very upset. And what's this guy thinking? And then the waters rose, and the man drowned. And when he went up to heaven and met with God, he was mad. He said, why did you do this? I prayed and prayed, I had faith, and you didn't show up for me, and I drowned. God said, I sent you a rowboat, a motorboat, and a helicopter. What else did you want? <laughs> if we do that, we close off our good. You know, it's there, but we expect it to be this way instead of opening to something more. And that's for us to look at. So um, uh, Nepo goes on to say, everything we need or want is waiting inside each day. I love that. It's inside each day. Nothing is clean or perfect, and nothing unfolds exactly as planned. The universe is vital, but it's not perfect. 
time. Time is probably the most important thing we have. We know we're eternal beings, but the beautiful gift of this life has a time li limit. It has an expiration date. And you and I are given every day 86,400 seconds of every day that we get to decide how we use. Now, it's not a carryover to the next day. If you lose them or don't use them, you lose them. But we have that time, and we can choose that time to be something that is meaningful. If it's resting, that's wonderful. If it's resting to refill your body, if it's reading for relaxation and nourishment, wonderful. If it's going out and doing some good in the world, if it's going to the gym, it's taking care of yourself, if it's being with friends, whatever it is, if it's doing, being done with thought. Because the art of abundance is about mindfulness mindfulness. Every second matters. If we think about how long is a year, much time, just ask a student that's just failed their final exam. And they'll tell you how precious a year is. And if we think about a month, how precious is a month? That's the parents of a premature baby. If you think of uh, just one second or one minute, how precious that is. Ask somebody who's just missed their flight. <laughs> and a millisecond. Ask an Olympian who's on the stage with a silver medal. A millisecond. Time is precious. How we use it is important. It's up to us. We're here for one important reason, and that's to express our life, to be to be the best we can be in any moment, to express it. That's why we're here. So we want to use that time the best. And when we have our healers up here, I'm going to read a, a little something before our, as our healers are coming up to just spread out and create that uh, healing circle. But one way to get, make the most of life is contribution. The art of giving and receiving, um, when we come from that place of love and, and compassion, we can make a huge difference in the world. So I'd like our healers to come up and create a space of healing as I read this little um, sharing our abundance. Stripped of causes and plans and things to strive for, I have discovered that everything I need or could ever ask for is right here in flawed abundance. We cannot eliminate hunger, but we can feed each other. We cannot eliminate loneliness, but we can hold each other. We cannot eliminate pain, but we can live a life of love and compassion. And as we finish up our healing, power of healing right now, just repeat after me. God is my source. God is my power. I have everything I need. Again, God is my source. God is my power. I have everything I need. Right here. Right now. And always. And so it is.